This episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics is brought to you by Park Place Surgical Hospital. That stolen base by Rawls gives the Raging Cajuns three stolen bases in this game. 15 for the tournament. That ball is hit deep and gone. What were you saying about power? Yeah, well, she just did it really well right there. Kind of ran into that pitch on the lower inner part of the plate and got her hands out. Hello and welcome to Inside Louisiana Athletics, a statement made in Troy, Alabama this weekend as the Raging Cajun softball team wins the Sunbelt Conference Tournament. Now it is on to the NCAA Regionals in Baton Rouge. More on that in just a minute, but first let's welcome in the head coach, Jerry Glasgow. So uh, you, you go 4-0, you win the conference uh, tournament, and you did it rather easily, easily with the exception of the Texas State game. But uh, it looks like things are really starting to, to come together for this group. Yeah, they're playing well. And having Dalton back in the middle of the field, middle of the lineup, and her leadership in the dugout, having her back 100% is really big. And then Jay Torres is just really coming on. Alderink's been coming on for the last half of the season, been outstanding. And now Kendall Talley. It's just a new name every day. But it, it's we got 11, 12 players really playing at a high level, which is what you want going into postseason. Let's, uh, we got a lot of highlights to get to, so let's go ahead and start. Uh, we, we take you to Troy, Alabama for game one, and look who is in the other dugout, none other than UL Monroe, the team that knocked you guys off in the season finale. Scoreless in the third, the Raging Cajuns bats get going. Caitlin Alderink, Kendall Talley, Justin Mills, all with RBI base hits, and it was four to nothing after three, and you, you're getting off to a pretty good start. Yeah, it was a good opening game for us. You know, the kids wanted to play UL Monroe again after the disappointing effort on senior day, and and, you know, they played well. Summer pitched well. Carly Heath came in and gave us two good innings of relief. And then the bats were, you know, all we needed them to be. Uh, next inning, Alderink with a sack fly that scored two runs. Uh, very unusual there. Sophie Piscos and then Heath comes in all the way from second. It was 6 nothing. And as you mentioned, uh, the, the pitching uh, was on point there. Kanderland, five innings, uh, one hit, seven strikeouts. Carly Heath, two innings and no hits. So uh, they got the job done. Yeah, something we work on, you know. We've, I think we've got thrown out on that twice this season, trying to score from second on a sack fly. <laughs> you know, you know, you want the kids to realize that's a possibility of ball mm -hmm. on the wall or uh, any time the outfielder has to dive for a ball. And I think it was Pisco that, you know, just running so hard and running the whole way and scored easily. It was, it was a really uh, fun play for me as a coach because finally after two attempts mm -hmm. of not working, it worked. Right. You win at 7 nothing. Game 2, South Alabama on Thursday morning. Bottom of the first, one on for Kendall Talley. She goes deep to put you up 2 nothing. And some are really firing on all cylinders, striking out five in a row early on in that one. Yeah, so Summer was phenomenal. She's uh, just a great postseason pitcher. And man, it's fun to, fun to write her name in the lineup, so I'm enjoying <laughs> these last few times. I understand that. You extend the lead in the fourth and again in the fifth, so it's 5 nothing. Bailey Curry delivering a two-run double to left center. That scores two. It was seven nothing. Uh, South Al with a three run homer that you know kind of tightened things up a little bit there late, but you come right back in the ne uh, next half inning to score three runs, and you got to love the way your team responds when the other team puts some runs on the board. Yeah, one thing we emphasize is always answering backs. You know, there's ways to win ball games, and one's to score first, and a second way, a, a, a second key characteristic of all good teams is when the other team puts a run up, you come right back and put one or two up yourself, and Answer their answer their run, and the kids did that to perfection there. You win that one 10 to 3. Then Friday, the driver's seat game, so to speak, uh, Texas State, the opponent. This one, a nail biter to the end, really. Second inning, Bobcats load the bases uh, in the bottom half, and Kendall Talley with a great diving catch to end that threat. And then Talley comes on to provide some offense in the top of the fifth, a blooper that scores Alyssa Dalton to give you a 1 0 lead. And, I mean, again, it seems like every week we sit here and talk about Kendall Talley. She's playing great defense. She's running the bases as well as anybody on your team, providing some power at times, just doing everything she's got to do. Just a great player, great athlete that's worked really hard and has really performed well for us this whole season. And one of our leaders on our ball club. And like Pisco, brings a lot of energy, a lot of spark to our ball club. Bobcats put some traffic on the bases early, but Kendra and Summer keeping – Goose eggs on the scoreboard. 
But in the fifth, they finally break through a two-run single and they take a two-to-one lead. But again, your team answers with a little help from Texas State this time. Sierra Bryan uh, at third for Justice Mills, who grounds the third base. Uh, the throw to first is off. That scores Bryan. The game's tied at two. Then Julie Rawls gives you the lead again with an RBI to make it uh, to give you the three-two lead. Yeah, Rawls has been huge all year. Leads our team with 52 RBIs, and great to see her have that clutch hit right there. Sophie Piscos with a rip to add an insurance run in the seventh, and that would be huge because in the bottom of the seventh, a solo home run would cut the lead to four to three. But you win it. That's how the score ended, four to three. You move to the championship game, and you jump all over South Alabama right away. And it just goes to show you uh, how winning that driver's seat game, as opposed to having to come through elimination games, really paid off for you. Yeah, you you want to go through the postseason. You want to always emphasize how important it is to you know to win, just win every game. And you don't want to get in a loser's bracket in a conference tournament if you can avoid it. And uh, you know, in 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 all my years here. We've gone right to the championship. We've not been in that loser bracket yet and don't want to be. So <laughs> appreciative of the girls for their effort. Tally with an RBI single, or actually two RBI single at score two. Gorderez with a base uh, clearing double, it was five nothing. And then the power comes out in the fifth. Alyssa Dalton, Sophie Piscos, Bailey Curry, all with two run homers and you're up 11 to one. And then in the fourth, Melissa Mayu with a three run homer. It's 15 to one at that point. And I, I mean, it just had to be a lot of fun to, kind of cut loose there and not have that the pressure any longer. Yeah, I think it was just a lot of the weight off the shoulders of the girls there once they got the lead. They got the championship. They got the lead. They wasn't going to – nothing was going to stop them at that point, and they just were playing loose and free, and I think it's a great example to each of those girls in our dugout how good we can be when we just play ball. Mm -hmm. On to the regionals now. In a very familiar site, uh, 50 miles down the road in Baton Rouge, you're the number two seed. LSU is number one. McNeese is four, George Washington is three. That's your opponent. Uh, they are the A-10 champions, Atlantic 10 champions. They're coming in with the pitcher of the year, the player of the year. And look, they were tested in their tournament. They lost the first game and had to play four elimination games and won them all. So uh, this team is, is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, they're very well coached by Shane Winkler, uh, who's, who's a really bright young coach. And then... Uh, they got talent. You know, you look at their nine hole is hitting 450. Be a lead off on most, but he's putting his power kids up front. And, uh, you know, they've got 12 home runs, 13 home runs, 17 home runs, respectively. And I think their team has got 64 home runs just all in total. A very good ball club, very offensive ball club. And there'll be nothing easy about it, it, but it's what you expect in a regional. We don't want it to be easy. We want it to be a challenge, and we want to respond to the challenge. When you came in, uh, you said that you, you're feeling good about the, the the regional that you've been put in, the teams that are there. Uh, just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we did, you know, right now as a coach, I just have a great feeling about our ball club. You always want to expect to win. Mm -hmm. When you go into postseason, one of the keys is believing you're going to win. And I couldn't believe more in my ball club right now. There's so many positive signs from so many different players. I think we're in a great spot going into postseason. We'll just go play ball now. All right, Coach. As always, we appreciate the time. And, of course, best of luck in Baton Rouge. All eyes will be on the state capitol this weekend as the Raging Cajuns head to LSU to play in the NCAA Regionals. Round ball. Throw to second. And the Raging Cajuns are once again the champions of the Sun Belt Conference 16th tournament championship victory for the Raging Cajuns since 2000 as they pick up their 44th win of the season in convincing fashion. 15 to three the final for the Raging Cajuns as they run rule South Alabama, Alex, in the championship game. And I just got the perfect bite. You get the dough of the bread, mm -hmm. then you get hit with onion strings, then you get hit with chili, and then you're like, what's happening? How is all this going on? It is comfort food. Sonic Twisted Texan Cheeseburger or a Footlong Coney. And it's comfort food. Mm -hmm.
perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Courtesy Experience is about exceptional customer service and great deals. Get a 2021 GMC Terrain for only $22,988. Or get a 2021 Buick GX for only $18,988. Discover the Courtesy Experience at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Athletics. The Raging Cajuns baseball team takes two of three at UTA in Texas this weekend and now have a home series finale with Troy coming to town here to talk about it all is the head coach, Matt Degg. So you take two of three from the Mavericks. It really tightens things up in the Sun Belt West division. Uh, but boy, it was a battle all weekend, a 15 inning game. You had to play 18 on Saturday, but the guys really showed some resiliency and, and battled and fought for everything. Yeah, they did. We've played really good baseball over the last five, six games. And it was a great series. Like you said, it was, uh, in my mind, two good teams going at it. Mm -hmm. They can pitch. Uh, they, they pitch baseball very well at UTA. And they've got an offense that I would describe as scrappy. They don't strike out a lot. And, and uh, they're going to put the ball in play. They're going to be able to execute. And then they played really good defense. And so we had to match them in all three phases. And, and that's kind of what you saw was a grudge match and, and a little bit of back and forth. And uh, it was one of the better series I've been in in a, in a while. Uh, I think their coach told me on Saturday that was the longest game ever played at their park. Really? Uh, <laughs> And there's been a lot of baseball played there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was a test of wills, and thankfully we were able to come out on top. Let's go ahead and take you to Arlington, Texas, uh, for the marathon 15-inning game one. As you mentioned, great pitching. Spencer Aragetti, Carlos Tavera, each go seven innings, each give up just two runs apiece. Tavera strikes out 10, Spencer 7. And like you said, it was just, uh, it was fun and it was good baseball. It really was. And, uh, you know, we pitched it very well. Spence matched their guy, you know, pitch for pitch, inning for inning. And and uh, we're able to, to kind of peck away, scratch at it and have a lead there, have a one run lead late and get it to, to tally, which is what we're always going to do. And uh, one of his former teammates, they were teammates at Grayson <laughs> right. uh, Junior College, uh, got him and uh, force that thing into extras. And I thought our bullpen just did a terrific job. Uh, both starters were really good as advertised. Uh, and it, like you said, it was a good college baseball game. Ben Fitzgerald, Drake Osborne, CJ Willis, all with RBIs in this one. And you mentioned just now the, the bullpen collectively giving up just one run, striking out nine in the final eight innings. Yeah, I think they gave up three hits after the ninth. And uh, there were some, there were some gigantic pitches thrown. There was the winning run and scoring position several times. Mm -hmm. And uh, Schultz, Menard, uh, the rest of the guys, they were able to wiggle out of it and, and get us back into the dugout. And then we were finally able to score and get it to Dane, who's a strike pumper, and thought he would do well in that spot, and he did. Mm -hmm. Josh Cofield with the game-winning RBI in the 15th. And as you said, Dane Dixon comes in to finish off the Mavs who had the tying run at second base, uh, uh, but you find a way to win it four to three in 15. That was the good news. The bad news is that really quick turnaround with a double header on Saturday and we go to game two and really who saw this coming? The Mavericks jump on Connor Cook early four runs in the first and there's that old baseball thought that if you're gonna get on a good pitcher, you kind of have to do it early and they, they certainly you, did that. You gotta do it early and uh, there was some adverse we we faced some adversity that day. I think we, you know, after we eat and get in bed at, at one or two o'clock in the morning, and like you said, it's quick turnaround. But that's for both teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Cookie was having trouble getting a grip on the baseball. Which a guy with hand speed, if the balls aren't rubbed up really good, uh, it's going to create problems. So it was slick in his hand, and we compound that. Kind of a product of that was we hit the first batter. Uh, 
and then we have a pivotal error at third base. And it leads to four in the first, and, and really that was all they needed. Cook was good after that, though. He only gave up one more run over the next five. Uh, offensively, you made a little bit of noise in the first and again in the eighth, but you just couldn't have that that big, big inning and break through. Never were able to break through. Uh, you know, we've got to continue to work to do better with guys in scoring position, cutting down on the chases. Uh, you know, it's hard to it's hard to string stuff together, Darren, offensively and mount big comebacks when you make early week outs or mm -hmm. you chase out of the zone or you're underneath fastballs. And that's kind of what we had going on in that second game. So you lose the second one, six to two. Game three, UTA goes up two nothing in the bottom of the second. And here's the resiliency I referred to earlier, because you come right back in the top of the third to tie it up at two on a Brennan Bro single. Right, Brennan's been outstanding the last two, three weeks. Uh, they score, we score, they score, <laughs> they score, we score, we score. Uh, it was kind of back and forth. Uh, you know, those are spots we generally really want to try to throw up zeros. Just weren't able to do it for one reason or another, but it got late. And I think the the key to the whole series for me, Darren, was you saw our depth kind of outlast them. Mm -hmm. And where they're bringing guys back, we're going to Jason Nelson, we're going to Carter Robinson, we're going to fresh guys. Right. And uh, ultimately, we're able to hold them at bay. I thought Carter did a great job. Nelly did a great job. Got Tally back in the mix, mm -hmm. who had a home run, a double, and a save mm -hmm. uh, in the same day. And so uh, I, we were able to out-depth them a little bit and come away with a series win. Jonathan Brandon had a two-out single. He made it 4-3. to three. Like you said, it stayed that way till the eighth. Tyler Robertson, Brandon Tally hit by pitches to get the inning started. And Bobby Lede makes them pay with an RBI single. That tied it at four. And then, like you mentioned, Brandon uh, comes back with a single down the right field line, and that gave you the lead five to four. It's always the small things that ignite an offense, hit by pitches, able to execute a bunt, able to execute a slug, uh, just the little things that kind of get you going, and we were able to pull away. Bullpen was great again. Mavs load the bases in the seventh. Blake Marshall strikes out two in a row. He squashes that. Then in the eighth, Jason Nelson, three up, three down. Tally does the same in the ninth inning. Uh, again, bullpen was phenomenal that day. Blake had a really good weekend. There's a guy that's, like Coach would say, worked while he's waited. Mm -hmm. uh, had plenty of opportunities here lately. They were hard to come by for him early just because he wasn't ready and uh, wasn't right. Uh, and has really put in the work, him and BJ, and, and he was outstanding. The inning that he had, he was 92, 93, 84 mile an hour slider, and uh, just presented a big problem for those guys. The final three regular season games of the year are at Russo Park. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the Troy Trojans come to town. They had won five in a row before uh, falling to Arkansas State this uh, past Sunday, but they're, they're looking like they're playing much better lately. Good ball club, older ball club, didn't get off to the start they wanted and uh, have started to figure it out here recently. Uh, but look, anytime you come down, Darren, to the final weekend and you're still playing for a championship, uh, that's that's a positive, especially the ups and downs we've had. Uh, if we get this place rocking, Cajun Nation shows up, we'll have a chance to win our division. No question about it. A lot of scoreboard watching uh, gonna happen this weekend, and I don't necessarily mean for, for you guys because you know, you have to take care of what's in front of you on the field. And obviously, if you don't, then whatever happens in Statesboro or anywhere else is, is meaningless. Right. And it's kind of a catch-22 because you, fit, you finish middle of the pack and you're going to play on Tuesday and then you're off a little bit and, and there's going to be a rest before the semifinal game. So you could, in theory, bring back some of your better arms. Uh, if, if you mess around and win the division, you're not going to play till Wednesday. If you finish second, you're not going to play till Thursday. So uh, there's a little give and take there. Any way it goes, what it boils down to is you're going to have to show up in Montgomery and win four games. A lot at stake this weekend. Of course, uh, if that wasn't enough, you have senior day and graduation. Twelve graduates going to uh, receive their degrees on Saturday. That's always a special moment at, uh, at the park. It really is. Very proud of these guys. I think we're... 12 semesters, six years straight of a 3.0 or better. We're going to finish at 3.2 or 3.3 as a team. And we're going to graduate 12 guys, which by far is the most I've ever seen on a ball club. So very proud and happy, excited for those guys. All right, Coach. As always, thank you for the time. Best of luck this weekend. And we'll certainly bring you some of that Senior Day uh, video next week on Inside Louisiana Athletics. This thing goes much further. By the way, he's starting tomorrow's
first game of the doubleheader. First pitch, line drive into left field. Phillip Childs on the run, makes the catch. Runner will tag. Cook will score. The Ragin' Cajuns have taken a 4-3 lead here in the top of the 15th inning. Because remember now, Solomon's out of the game. So Andrew would have to come in and catch if we tie this thing up and go to the 16th. 0-1 Marino, chop ground ball to the left side, fielded by the third baseman Fitzgerald to throw to first in time, and the Ragin' Cajuns win the marathon 4-3 in 15 innings. One heck of a ball game to start this three-game series for the top two teams in the West Division. Louisiana in 15 innings claims the win 4-3 over UT Arlington. This cheesecake in this cup is like my perfect idea of fancy. The business casual of cheesecake. Right. Desserts. Sonic Cheesecake Blasts. 5 o'clock p.m. Loosen your tie up. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. We all have dreams. I want to dance. I like to build things. I want to explore. For over 120 years, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has made it possible for young dreams to become realities. So go ahead, dream big. We'll help you make those dreams come true. You are UL Lafayette's number one priority. That's why we're following guidelines set by national and local health experts to protect you during the COVID-19 pandemic. The university is reorganizing rooms and spaces to reinforce social distancing, sanitizing campus buildings, and mandating that everyone wears protective equipment. But don't take our word for it. Take a look for yourself at some of the many safety measures we're implementing, and you'll see that our priority is you. The Courtesy Experience is about exceptional customer service and great deals. Get 10,000 off MSRP on your choice of a 2021 GMC Sierra, a 2021 Acadia Denali, or a 2021 Buick Enclave. Discover the Courtesy Experience at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. You know, the faculty uh, will be impacted by advance. Uh, but, but really, the faculty are the ones who have driven for decades uh, this significant educational experience here. You know, it's their passion and their love of students that have made undergraduate research and creative works, uh, experiential learning in general, available to our undergraduate students. This is going to provide a mechanism for faculty to reach more students and, and provide the resources so that these faculty can entice more students into uh, the experiential uh, learning experience. When it comes to um, professors, from a professor perspective, we are constantly looking to get students involved, you know, not just in the classroom. I mean, we, we want that student that's gonna raise their hand and engage. And we're actually looking though for not just that student, but for every student to engage in that same way. You know, that said, um, it takes a lot of resources to not just do our own work, but to train other students to do it. When I think about um, my lab, for example, there is a, there's kind of my line of research and what I would do if I were just doing my own work and not mentoring anybody. Um, and then there's all of the pieces involved in getting those students to engage in research in a meaningful way. There are um, you know, financial resources, there are training resources. If I want to teach my students not just psychology, but how to do research of psychology, and not just psychology, but my particular area of psychology, that's a big burden for me to overcome. 
overcome. You know, I've got to convince them that it's important, um, which I think just having the advanced program in place does. Um, I've got to convince them or help them find resources, financial resources, so that they can take time off work or travel to a conference to present their work. Um, you know, and I've got to provide these fundamental skills that are about research that really aren't my expertise. Um, so what the advanced um, program does for UL Lafayette professors is it provides us with extra resources to support those students, providing them with, with uh, just the support of having an agency that's within the university that's entirely devoted to this little bit extra that they're trying to do. You are UL Lafayette's number one priority. That's why we're following guidelines set by national and local health experts to protect you during the COVID-19 pandemic. The university is reorganizing rooms and spaces to reinforce social distancing, sanitizing campus buildings, and mandating that everyone wears protective equipment. But don't just take our word for it. Take a look for yourself at some of the many safety measures we're implementing, and you'll see that our priority is you. The courtesy experience means better customer service. It's about giving you a great deal. Like a brand new 2021 Chevy Equinox for only $21,988. Or get a 2021 Chevy Trax for only $17,988. Discover the courtesy experience at Courtesy Chevrolet Cadillac and Bruce Orr. The health and safety of our students is our main concern. That is why the Office of University Housing and Residential Life has developed new protocols and procedures to strengthen our efforts to protect you during this pandemic. Housing staff is trained and ready to carry out safety protocols and guidelines set by local and national health authorities. All common areas will be cleaned and sanitized often, and no more than two residents will share a bedroom and bathroom. These are just a few of the safety measures we are implementing to ensure that our priority is you. its full potential. But sometimes you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. And I just got the perfect bite. You get the dough of the bread, mm -hmm. then you get hit with onion strings, then you get hit with chili, and then you're like, what's happening? How is all this going on? It is comfort food. Sonic Twisted Texan Cheeseburger or a Footlong Coney. And it's comfort food. Mm -hmm. Base by Rawls gives the Raging Cajuns three stolen bases in this game. 15 for the tournament. That ball is hit deep and gone. What were you saying about power? Yeah, well, she just did it really well right there. Kind of ran into that pitch on the lower inner part of the plate and got her hands out. Absolutely, but that's what makes this team so good. And going into even that postseason run overall, if NCAA regionals coming up and potentially supers. That ball might be out of here, and it is. Sophie Piscos hits her second home run of the tournament. Nine to one. Tough, but this Louisiana team is so good. I don't really know how you negate what they're doing. They have eight runs already, and we're only in the top of the third inning. And Curry unloads. My goodness, it's in the trees. Someone send the bloodhounds for that one. Eleven to one.